Hey everybody, um, so this video here is going to talk about carbohydrates and um, it's going to be a little more detailed than the last video. So the first thing to talk about with carbohydrates is what are they used for, right? Uh, if you understand what they're used for, everything going forward is going to make more sense. Um, and some of you may already know this, carbohydrates are a fuel source for the body. So when it comes to making sure that your body has energy, you have to eat food. Um, and the primary source, the first source of energy that your body will use are the carbohydrates or the sugars. Carbohydrates and sugars, same thing. Um, another, so that's why another name for carbohydrates are saccharides. Saccharides means sugar. So we could have different types of uh, saccharides. We could have monosaccharides, which are simple, single sugars like glucose. We have disaccharides which are two simple sugars put together, two monosaccharides put together. And then we also have po uh, polysaccharides, which are more complex carbohydrates, long chains of carbohydrates. All of these are formed using condensation reactions, like I mentioned before. And let's just jump right into it. Monosaccharides are simple sugars like glucose. As mentioned, their energy is stored within them, specifically in the bonds. Uh, we'll talk more about that in chapter four. They take on multiple shapes. Some of them are gonna be like this ring structure. Others may be more linear. If you take two monosaccharides and link them together, you will create a disaccharide. So di means two, and that is a disaccharide. This is a double sugar. It's gonna be two monosaccharides linked together. With that said, the name of this bond that links those two sugars together is called a glycosidic linkage. Help you remember that? Glyco. Sounds a lot like sugar, right? And we're going to talk about glycogen in just a second. So glyco means sugar. Glycosidic linkage. They're linked together. This is a covalent bond that is formed during the condensation reaction. And here's an example of this, right? So we have two simple sugars, two glucoses. We are going to use a glycosidic linkage in order to connect them together, and we will create, create maltose. Again, how do you do this? This is a condensation reaction. You're going to remove a water to link these two things together. Here are a couple examples of disaccharides the, and, the monomers, and the monomers that make them up. So maltose is an example of a disaccharide and it is two glucoses put together. What if you change the monosaccharides you're linking together, such as lactose? You can take a glucose molecule and bind it with a galactose molecule. That's lactose. Sucrose, glucose and fructose. And what you're going to do is you're going to see that they make slightly different types of sugars, all right, with different properties, and they can be used for different things. Polysaccharides is when you are going to create multiple glycosidic linkages between monomers and you're going to make long chains of sugars. Again, same process. It's a condensation reaction. Keep in mind, if you ever see dehydration synthesis, it's the same thing as a condensation reaction. You're going to dehydrate it, right? Condensation is when you dehydrate something. You're going to have water on the outside of it. Lastly, with polysaccharides, um, these are the macromolecule polymers, and these could be a few hundred or even thousand monosaccharides long. All right, again, it's going to be multiple links over and over and over again. This is typically a storage of energy because they're such long chains and they could be used over time. Um, and specifically in our bodies, we can create our own polysaccharides for storage if we need to. When we do that, we create something called glycogen. Again, glycosidic linkage, glucose, they all sound very similar. Glycogen is something that is stored both in plants as starch, so starchy plants, as well as in humans. And this is stored in our muscles and our livers. Just think about that for a second. It's energy. It's stored energy so we can use it. Why would I put that in my muscles? Think about what your muscles have to do all day. They're always moving. So if you need to get energy for your muscles, why would I have to go try to find it from somewhere else in the body and bring it to the muscles? Why don't I just store some of it in the muscles? So if I need it, it's right there. So that is glycogen. Um, 
and that is a polysaccharide that you create in your own body. All right, so carbohydrates, um, that's a nice little overview. And if you have any questions about that, let me know. We will talk more about the process of breaking down uh, and using sugars uh, when we get to chapter four.